Hey, hey, everybody, welcome on into the studio. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, and tonight we are going to have a mug make along. That's right, we're going to make a mug from a slab of clay. So it'll be a hand built mug make along. And I'm going to show you how I make a mug. And I do have quite a few mug making classes up on ClayShare. If you haven't gone and downloaded the ClayShare app yet, what are you waiting for? Go do that. It's in your app store. Just go get it. We have a bunch of free content, but we have hundreds of full length classes for our premium members. And we do two private broadcasts each week. And then we do this live one each week. That's public for everybody. So you get a lot with ClayShare. Um, also, we got ClayShare Con coming up two weeks from yesterday. I know. I can hardly believe it's happening too. That's four days of free online clay awesomeness. So it's basically an online clay conference and it's free. Now we do have Wednesday, the 22nd of February, our special evening program just for our premium members of ClayShare. That's it. That's the only people I get to watch. Sorry, they get a little gift. It's a little something extra for those guys. But everybody else can tune in on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and watch for free. And if you can't make the live event for ClayShare Con, it's all recorded. You can go back and watch it later. You, in fact, can go back and watch last year's and the year before and the year before that. So we have got three years of past clay share cons that you can go back and watch. This year we're giving away a Speedball Artista wheel, uh-huh, a pottery wheel. And hold on, you might want to sit, we're giving away an L&L &L test kiln. So if you've seen all of my kiln openings in my small kiln over the years, that is my little L&L &L test kiln. And folks are always saying, well, it's tiny. It's well, it's small, but it's not tiny because you can fit three to fit three to four mugs in it and a plate. So if you need it for a mug or two, great. But if you got some test tiles you got to run through, you don't want to fire your big kiln. And if you make jewelry or small things, it might be the only kiln you need. So we're going to be giving away one of those with a huge thank you to our friends at L&L &L Kilns for sponsoring that giveaway. And all you do to enter is go to clayshare.com and sign up for our emails. In fact, if you do that and you get our emails, you'll be entered in all of our giveaways that we do throughout ClayShareCon. All right, that's my ClayShareCon promo. Uh, lots of great, awesome people are going to be joining us for ClayShareCon. We have Jeff from JR Pottery Farms, Michael Harbridge from Learn Fired Arts, Paula McCoy from Colors for Earth. Uh, we have Melanie from Ceramapix. We have Terry from Fired on Images joining us. We have Billy Ritter joining us. Uh, Annie uh, Christberg is going to join us and do an amazing hand-built pitcher tutorial. We have uh, Del Good joining us doing some speedball demo. We have Amico, we have Mako. Uh, I know I'm forgetting people. And I, I, Debbie Dela Cruz is going to be with us from De La Designs. Um, go to ClayshareCon.com and you can see everything because I know I'm forgetting people and I really hate to leave anyone out. But there's only so much room in this head. And right now it's mug making. I had to promote ClayshareCon. It's the biggest thing we do all year. So, of course, I had to promote it. It's, um, it's my favorite time of year. I love it. We give away so much, and we have so many great deals, and there's so much information coming to you all. All right, so in the image I used for tonight, you will have seen this mug right here. But here's another one that was in the image, glazed. And the third one from that picture sold. I don't have that mug. That one's gone. It has a new home. But... This one is glazed with Georgie's Interactive Pigment in Sand and Surf. I'll show it over here so y'all can see it. And then the glaze on top is my Chun Blue. So the Chun Blue looks like this when it's by itself. And then when you put light flux on top, you get this. And when you put it on top of a pigment, like the Georgie's Sand and Surf, you get this. So the Sand and Surf pigment, I really like. I don't, it didn't need to happen though for this mug. I feel like I could have done this mug with just the chun by itself. But I wanted to give it a go with the sand and surf pigment. And there's the pigment on the bottom. So you just apply it, water it down, wipe it back, and it stains your surface. And then you put your glaze on top. Pretty nice, right? This one, ah, uh, you guys, you know what this is gonna get glazed with? <laughs> One of these six glazes, right here. One of my new Celadons. I was saving it just for this. I think the pink. 
Don't you want to see it in pink? I, I, I want to see it in pink. Look at the, the pink on dark clay. I just can't even. But this is B-Mix, so it'll be pink on light clay. And uh, there's, there's a good idea what it'll look like right there. So I'll be glazing that, and I don't know when it'll go in the kiln. Next couple days, I'll get that in. But when you hand built a mug, most people think the mug has to be something like this, which it can. This is a great straight-sided mug. I made a few months ago using Marvelous Molds. They sent me some of their new textures. Someone was just actually asking about this mug, if it was glazed and if they could see it. So for the person who was asking, there you go. Here it is. And I also made this at the same time. They wanted to see that as well. So now they, there you go. I'll actually take photos of these and put them up in my social probably tomorrow. But you can make straight-sided mugs, but you don't have to. Here's another straight-sided. Right? It's very simple. A cylinder mug. It's, it's the basics. It's where you start when you are hand building mugs. And then this is like the next step, which is to give a little tummy to it. Just a little bit of a little fullness, like you ate a little too much Thanksgiving dinner, right? You know how that goes. Uh, right here, right? It's great. But sometimes you want a little more, like I did here. We got a bit of volume happening in these two mugs. And that's kind of what we're going to do tonight, is we're going to put some volume in it. But you got to make sure you have clay that's moist enough so that you can stretch it without it cracking and that your clay is thick enough. If you roll these skinny little thin slabs, you're not going to be able to put your texture in and add volume. The clay will be too thin. So we're not going to do that. So don't worry. It's going to be perfect. I promise. All right. So the clay I'm using tonight is a cone five clay. Uh, it's Tucker's Mid Smooth Stone Spec. It's a Canadian clay. But those of us that live on the border here, states bordering Canada, we often can get Canadian clays. And I know Clayscapes Pottery carries tuckers. So if you are in the vicinity of Clayscapes, you can get yourself some tuckers clay and use that. And I have to tell you, as far as using a clay, if you're looking for something that's light and has speckles, this one is a great one. It is... As bright as B-Mix, I have found, when you put glaze on top of it, you get the same bright colors that you do from B-Mix, but guess what? You don't get that cracking. Um, I can make a mug, put a handle on, leave it sitting out, and that handle's not going to crack off. With B-Mix, that handle will be laying next to it the next morning. All right, so I've got a clay slab I rolled out. It is about three-eighths of an inch thick. You could go a little thicker if you want, whatever you want to do, because you can always thin them down. I rolled this out on my slab roller. Often when I do tutorials for you all, I'll roll out my slab by hand, but just, you know, for the lack of time we have together, we're going to do it this way. Now you see it's on a sheet of plastic. After I roll out my slabs, what I'll do is I'll cut them to fit whatever board I have in the studio. Right now I'm using these GR Pottery Form boards. And I also have my own boards that I use that I've just cut from plywood. But these are great. And they're easy to get a hold of. So that makes them even better. So I just cut my clay and I will stack my slabs up three slabs high. And then I just wrap everything in plastic. And it can stay in my studio for weeks like this. I've, I've had slabs that have sat for two weeks when they're wrapped up properly. I come back and they're perfectly fine for making mugs, plates, whatever I want to do with it. So this is a slab I rolled out earlier today, and I just set it to the side for this evening, and we're ready to use it. So let's let's get going. Let's make some let's make some mugs, you guys. All right. So I'm gonna start with I rolled this out on a piece of canvas, which is great. But the problem with canvas is you get canvas texture, and I want to put my own texture in. So to take care of that, I am just going to use a rib. This is a yellow mud tool rib. And before I used these, I used to use the um, like spackle, putty spackle knives and uh, drywall knives and stuff that they sell at the hardware store. So if you cannot get these, there's other options. You don't, you're not limited at all. Please don't think you have to have this to make pottery, although I will say it does make your life easier. All right, so I'm just smoothing this out. 
It does stretch the clay a tiny bit when I do this, but it's not a big deal. We're not trying to thin the clay with this. All we're trying to do is smooth it out. And then I clean off this little bit here, and I'll just roll it up, and it'll go in my ball of reclaim. All right, now we're going to flip this over. Normally, in the studio, I would just take the slab and flip it over, but I've had a few people reach out to me asking easier ways to flip slabs because when they go to lift it, um, they have a hard time with the clay tearing or it doesn't lift evenly. So this is a really simple way to take care of that. Get two wear boards and make a sandwich with your clay in between, right? And then you just flip them over. And the GR Pottery Form boards are thin enough and light enough that they're not that heavy to flip. My plywood ones are really heavy, so benefit to the thin boards. And there you have it, the other side of the clay, right? I'm going to smooth this on out. Now, if you don't want to put texture on this, you don't have to. I'm, <laughs> I'm a small fan of texture. <laughs> that, that'd be a lie. We all know how I feel about texture, right? I got a thing for it. And, uh, you know, that's not bad. That's, that's, a, that's an okay thing. So you can add your texture however you want to. You know, if you want to make your own textured rollers, I have a class teaching you how to make your own rollers. I also have a, a texture ball stamp that you could roll in. Or if you just want to make stamps, you know, you can make your own stamps and texture your slab with a whole bunch of these. And you might think, well, what's that going to look like if I just have a couple little stamps? How does that fill up a whole big slab? Well, this mug right here, my dears, was made with just a couple little stamps. That's all. And it filled up the whole area. So it's a great, it's a great little mug. Has a lot happening, right? I think there's two different leaves, a flower, and then this was actually this rolled into the bottom of it just because I wanted a little bit of texture on the bottom and then I had another smaller roulette one that I rolled all the way around to make a border. See how, see, you can make your own texture. But if you don't want to make texture and you want to buy texture, I got you covered. Uh, you know, on Clay Share Market we have a ton of rolling pins from my designs. This is Cardinals and Birches, one of my favorites. This is Scandy Birds. This is the one that was on the image and we'll use this one tonight. Although, I'm, I can't show you all the ones over there. These are, there's new releases coming in the minis. The Wildflowers is a great one. It's a really great one for, but, but no, no. We're going to use this one here. We're going to use the Scandy Bird tonight. Because I want to do some glazing with them. So we're going to use it. Now, this slab right here is a little sticky. And if your clay is really sticky, you might run into some problems with it sticking to whatever you're rolling on it for texture. I don't think it's sticky to the point where it's going to be a problem, but we're going to just jump in and try it. And if it is, uh, I'll show you how to fix it, right? That's the way to do it. All right, 12 inch long, so you can get a nice wide area of texture. I find that when you get to rolling pins that are longer than 10 inches, holding onto the handles and rolling them into clay the, the, the texture doesn't press evenly across because you're putting all your force out here. You're not putting the force here. So the middle sometimes doesn't have a really good impression. So to fix that, it's super easy. You roll your rolling pin from the barrel. So you just walk it like this. And it might look kind of funny doing it. It doesn't look as cool as just grabbing the handles and rolling it across. And depending on your hand strength, you might be able to do that. But me, I like to walk it. What camera are you on, overhead? Go. Huh? One you want. Oh, I, I can go anywhere. I wanted to show the folks on too. So there you have it. And now we have a great big area of texture and we can pick and choose what we use for our mug. Like any area at all. That's the hard part I find is picking the texture area. <laughs> All right, you were a texture fan before you found me. <laughs> I have been a big more is more person my whole pottery career, although um, there's something to be said 
for a beautiful form and a simple glaze, absolutely. All right, so we've got plenty of clay to work with and I'm gonna cut out my template. So this is easy. This is a four by 12 measured out four inches tall, 12 inches wide piece of craft foam that I measured to be four by 12 and then cut it out. That's it, that's the template. All the mugs I make are four by 12. Easy, most of them. Sometimes I make it four and a half, I want a tall one. If I'm making a stein, I go to five inches. If I want a little more of a, a cappuccino cup, this little guy right here I think was a three, three and a, three and a half, I think for the shorter one. So it just depends, this one might have been, see that one might have been a four and a half, this one here. It just depends what you want. This one, this is a four by 12, let's see. Yeah, this one's a straight four by 12. So this one must have been a four and a half, just a little bit taller. So it's entirely up to you what size you want to use. And we're going to cut this out. And so you just pick a section that you like, what's going on. Uh, it's all good. I don't see anything I don't like. That's problematic sometimes uh, because I have a tendency to go right in. All right, so here's the thing that's going to make people crazy. I'm going to cut my texture out from right here. And I know there's people out there that won't be able to handle the fact that I am not starting on the edge and I'm wasting this extra clay, but I'm not. It's going to get turned into something, so there's no waste. It just might not be a mug. Okay, let's cut it out. So we do a straight cut across the top, holding our knife straight up and down. Just follow along your template. If you have a hard time cutting along the craft foam edge and you wiggle a little or you're afraid you're going to cut in, a really great tip is to grab a stick. This is just a little wooden stick I got from the Home Depot, your own local home store, home supply store. And you just put that there on top of your template and then you use that as your guide. And so you cut along that. And then our sides we're going to cut at an angle. And it doesn't matter what angle you hold as long as you hold the same angle on each side because we want a beveled cut. We don't need this template anymore. All right, so we're going to pull out. And there's clay on the top and there's clay on the bottom. But I wanted the bird specifically to be in the center. So there's my little slab. I'm just going to put this off to the side and set that there. And then we're going to cut out our bottom now. So for a 4x12 mug, you'll see I wrote on here a 4-inch cookie cutter is what you want to make your bottom. You can make a smaller bottom. Uh, let's see, this one right here. This one has a 3.5-inch bottom, and you just, you just got to tuck it in a little more. But we're going to use the 4-inch. And I'm just going to line that up right here. Cut it out. And there's the bottom. I'm just going to put that off to the side as well. Now, this clay right here I will use and I will make stuff with it. But what I want to do is cut a little bit off so that we can make a handle. So I'm just going to ball this up a bit. And then this slab here and this slab here. They can each make another mug or I can make a tray. I could smooth the texture out that I have on here and add a different texture and do something different with them. But let's set these to the side right now because we don't need these. We want to work on our mug. And if I'm not going to get to something right away in the studio, I'm going to wrap it up with plastic so it doesn't dry out on me while I'm working on the other things. All right, so here's our mug body, here's our mug base, and here's our handle. Doesn't it look like a mug? I like to sign the bottoms with my stamp, and this is a stamp I made out of clay, carved it out of clay, and then I bis fired it. But you can have stamps made. You can send your name, your signature, or if you have a logo, in, and there's companies that will do that for you. Uh, my stamp, let's see if we can get close enough. There's, there's my stamp right there. 
I can see this is how I sign some pieces. My carved work, I actually carve my signature on the bottom, but you know, that's not what we're doing tonight. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little board. These are inserts that I got from Studio Pro Bats. And when I throw on my pottery wheel, I use their Space Saver Bat System. And these are the inserts for that, but I found they're really fabulous as a small work board for hand building. So we have our texture. We don't want the texture inside the mug. We want the texture on the bottom. So we're just gonna flip that over. And we're going to set this to the side. And if you have questions about mug making, now is your chance to ask. So you always seem to have uneven edges when you cut at a slant. So try using a stick, Jane. Try the stick because, let me just move that slab out of the way. When you put the stick here and you just, just Na naturally hold like you would hold a pen when you're writing. Think about it like that. I mean, we all hold a pen a certain way or a pencil when we sign our name. Put the knife in your hand and just hold it as if you were going to write your name. That gives you your angle. You see, there's my angle right there. It's my signature. It's natural. I've been signing stuff my whole life holding a tool like this. So put this up against the edge and then just drag it down. And then you do the same on the other side and you drag it down and you will cut the same angle. And the little wooden stick here is your guide. It's your friend. It's really going to help you out. It's a very inexpensive tool. Uh, you can also use it as a thickness strip if you need to, but I, I love it. I use them all the time for all kinds of things. All right. So you might've noticed I wedged this up a little bit and I've rolled it out to a kind of fat carroty shape and we're gonna go ahead and pull our handle. If I'm making mugs that are hand built with pulled handles, the handles take longer to dry than it does to make the mug and the mug to be ready for the handle. That's because we're gonna introduce water into the clay when we pull the handle. So what I will do is I will start by wedging up my clay, rolling it out to kind of a fat carrot shape, and then we are gonna pull. Now I have a fabulous tutorial on how to pull the perfect handle. I'm going to show you now, but it's on ClayShare. So if you need a refresher course in pulling handles, that's going to be the thing for you. And so our first pull, coming closer so you guys can see. Once we have our, I got my hand wet. I don't dip my clay in the water. I dip my hand in the water. Put my fingers behind it, my thumb in the front, and then I just glide down. We just pull. And that's just putting a little groove, a thumb groove in there. And then this is the U pull, and then my scissor pull. And then we flip it over and we do the same thing facing the other direction. So what's happening here is the thumb pull is putting our groove in and also lengthening it. The U pull is reining in the sides and keeping those sides from getting away on us because they try to go wide, might not want to be that wide. And the scissor pull thins it down just a bit because you want the slab, the little handle and the slab thickness to be the same. So I'm just going to keep pulling until I get it to where I'm happy with the thickness. It's still a little thick. We'll thin it down a little bit. If your handle's too long, you can always nip off a bit. I make them about five to seven inches. It depends on how big of a mug I'm putting them on. And I only know the size because over the years, folks have asked me how long are the handles when they're pulled. So this way, um, I, I just remember it now. So this thickness is looking pretty good. It's about as thick as the slab. It might be a tiny bit thicker, that's okay. You just wanna make sure when you're making a handle, beginners tend to make their handles way too narrow. When I look at my mugs from when I was first making pottery, they were so skinny. They're about half the width of this, and it may look great, and it might seem like a great handle, but once it's fired and glazed, when you put your hand on it and you try to lift up a full mug of something, it's going to cut into your hand. It's not going to be a pleasant experience. So make them a little wider than you think they need to be starting out, and remember, your clay is going to shrink. 
So you don't need to worry about looking at it thinking, that's too big. It's not. It's going to be perfect. All right. Once your handle's pulled, we're going to set it up. So I just pressed the little extra bit of clay that I had on it onto my bat here and straighten it out. And then I shape it. I'm pre-shaping the handle that's going to go on my mug. So it has this really lovely curve already built into it. And then it just sits. If for some reason I didn't get to my handle as soon as I planned to and it dried out a little more than I want to, this curve is the curve I'm going to keep anyways. So it's not going to be a problem. It's not going to crack. It's not going to break. It can just get trimmed to the size it needs and attached to my mug. Diana, so my way of pulling handles is fab, is marvelous, she says, and she loves pulling handles now. Uh, many people hate pulling handles, but I promise, give my method a try. It will change the way you make handles. You, if you hate handles, you might be able to tolerate making handles. I, I have never minded making handles ever, and it's never a problem. Um, I know for some people it's a block. Like They're like, oh, I'd make mugs, but I've got to put a handle on it. To get a handle on the handles, folks. You can do it. You can make your handle. All right, I'm just going to sit this off the camera so that it can start to dry. So you have issues with the top of the mug not being level. It's always sort of a slight dip. So in one area, or is it a big dip? So if you make sure that your slab that you cut to start with is even four inches across, you're setting yourself up for success, right? Now, when we go to join it, we are going to have a little more clay at the join. And if need be, you can just go ahead and trim that down. And, and we'll go ahead and do that, and we'll see what happens. All right, so we have our slab here. And I'm just going to go ahead and take a damp sponge and smooth the outer edge where the texture is. You know, when I was first making mugs, I was taught you can't put texture on the lip of a mug because it would be unpleasant for the user, the end user, right? But the fact is, if you just go ahead and soften that and round it a little bit, your texture can go right up to the edge. But if you're somebody who doesn't want texture on the top part of your mug, well, this mug doesn't have it. And all I did is I started my texture down about half an inch. So I left a half an inch empty at the top. And then when you cut it out, just leave it empty. And then you don't have to worry about any issues with the texture bothering you. All right, so let's flip this over gently. You notice how I'm not ripping it off the board. I'm not torquing it. I'm not twisting it. You know, we talked about warping recently, and we did a really great warping Q&A and info session. And a lot of warping comes from the way it was made and the way it was dried. So how you handle your clay right now is really going to influence whether it warps or not. So don't, don't be too rough with it. All right, so now we have our clay slab. And we're going to go ahead and slip and score our sides so we can make our handle. So you don't have a dip, just not level across the top of the mug. So check and see if your little slab is actually four inches tall all the way across. I'm thinking what might be happening if you're getting a little bit of an unlevel top your knife might be drifting if you're not using a guide. So maybe try using a guide and that will help. So I'm going to slip and score the edge. And instead of plain water with clay, I use what's called magic water. And that is just water with sodium silicate and soda ash mixed in. And that recipe is up on ClayShare Resources. And I mix it by a gallon. And then the gallon just sits there. And when I need it, I pour it into these little containers. This is my B-mix, but the tuckers and the B-mix are so close, I just use the same slip. But I have containers for porcelain for my slip, and I have containers for dark clay for my slip, too. Um, and yeah, here's the magic water. Here you go. I'll get it. So I've had this gallon for maybe two years. You can mix up a gallon, and you might think, I'm never going to use a gallon. Well, you're not going to use it up right away. But over two years, see where I'm at? So you, you'll get there eventually. And it's awful nice. When I need some magic water, I can just grab this jug, and it's made. So gallon of water, three tablespoons of sodium silicate, and one and a half teaspoons of soda ash. And if you want to make half that, cut it in half. 
right? But I just make a full gallon because I'm going to eventually use it. At some point in my pottery career, I will use that gallon and make another. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and roll it up. Now, some people wait too long at this stage. Your clay might be a tiny bit floppy, but if you leave it flat and you let it dry too much, what begins to happen is clay has a memory. And as it dries flat, it wants to stay flat. And then when you go to roll it up, what happens is your seam might pop on you or you'll get an ovaling as it dries. So try to work with the clay as soon as you can. Now we're going to overlap the inside of the outside. I know this is confusing, so listen. The inside edge of the outside flap is going to go to the center of the bevel cut on the inside flap. And I'm going to line them up. I'm not really pressing it yet. I've just lined them up so that my top is even. Because what happens a lot of times is people don't line up their top seam here. They start pressing, and then when they get up here, one side is sticking up higher than the other. Yes, so look, see how I got this level right now? It's level right now. That's what you want. Now I'm going to put my hand on the inside up against the seam, just gently to provide resistance so that as I roll my seam over, and you notice my hands are dry. They have clay on them and they're a little dusty, but they're not wet. So you want to have dry hands when you're doing this because if they're wet, you're going to slide. You're not going to be able to fold up your seam. You're not be able to roll over it like I'm doing right here. So there's the outside and I've got this magic rib. Actually, it's the zero red rib from Mud Tools. So I'm just going to smooth my seam on the top. And then on the interior, and I'm not sure if we can get in there. This is where, when they invent a teeny tiny camera, oh, what if I had like a ring camera I could put on my hands, right? If I could put it on my index finger right here. Could you imagine? That'd be amazing. So we have the inside of the seam we need to do something with. I can put my hands inside this mug. If you cannot put your hand inside the mug, you could use the back end of a wooden clay knife or a tool called a potter's thumb. But I support the outside on the seam, and I'm just going to take my red rib, and I just smooth it gently along. If you don't have a red one, you could use a yellow one. Um, you know, this big yellow guy right here, you could turn it around. He'll fit down in, and you can use him to smooth it out if you want. So we're smoothing out that seam. And then we're going to flip the whole thing over because we need to smooth out the seam and I only went about halfway down. Now I'm going to smooth out from the middle all the way to the, well, it's the bottom, but we're coming up to the bottom. And that's the other half of the seam. We're just going to smooth that out. That blends everything in. The clay is still pretty wet. You see how flexible and wet it is? It's completely workable, though. All right, now we have another thing with our seam. We have the front. There's always a seam. It's just how it's done because it's a hand-built piece, not wheel thrown. So the seam is here, and we have options with the seam. One, if you didn't put texture on it, you could use a rib and smooth it completely out and smooth it away, and you'd see no seam at all if you want to do that. But we have this great texture. So sometimes when I make a seam, I will, my seam is right here on this mug, I will really highlight it. I will put an extra deep little groove here. Almost looks like a flap, like my sweater got buttoned, right? And then I put some buttons on it. So that creates a really nice little element. Another thing you could do is you could smooth the texture here out, and you could use a stamp and stamp up the sides, right? And so you've just created another little detail, and it highlights that. Since I often put my handle where the seam is, like I did on this mug, all I'm going to do is make sure it's sealed properly, and then I will highlight it just a little bit. So I just check it, and I did roll it up, but I want to make sure it's completely sealed. So I'm just going to take my finger and just go in and gently roll my finger along it. Now, taking a clean, you could use um, a ruler, a wooden ruler, but I'm taking my clean mud tool. And I just went in there. Do you see how I just laid this against it right here? And I'm just kind of pulling up to create a much more noticeable line. 
And then I'll take my, this is actually a color shaper, but you can get them called clay shapers. This is a big one. I, I have a smaller one somewhere, but I don't know where it went. So we're, we're using this big giant guy. It's pretty handy. So I've highlighted my seam. Now this is the bottom of my mug. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you're using a texture that can go either way, but this does have an upside and a downside. So this is the down right here, this is the bottom. So we're gonna slip and score this part right here. So let's do that now. Whose initials on this tool? Okay, I'm gonna tell the story. I tell this a lot. This is the RAR wooden knife. And when I was teaching, uh, students at the end of the semester would leave their tools behind and they would have a couple weeks to come in and pick up the tools they left behind. But college students have better things to do apparently than come back and get their wooden clay knives because the student never came back and the uh, cleaning service comes into the college and they're going to throw these all away. So there's like a pile of tools that are just going to get thrown in the trash. And as the teacher, what am I supposed to do? Let that happen? No, 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 I could not do that. So I take them and I would end up with way too many tools. And then I would give them away to other students the next semester, right? So, uh, but I ended up bringing this one home and now it's my RAR knife. If your initials are RAR and you took uh, ceramics with me at college and you want your clay knife back, let me know and I'll send it back to you because it's still in good condition. I've had it for almost like 10 years, <laughs> but I'll give you back your clay knife. Uh, <laughs> I kept it from the landfill. All right, so let's slip and score the bottom of this with the serrated rib. And I dip it in my magic water and get my serrated rib wet. And then I just score it up like crazy. I don't, I don't brush on slip. Like I don't take slip and a brush and goop it on. You can if that's your way of working. This is just my way. So, you know, we all, we all find what works best for us in our studio practice and this works for me. All right, we're just gonna put this off to the side. Now we're gonna grab our bottom. And we're gonna put, put that over there actually. So use a silicone spatula for smoothing the inside seam and making volume, whatever you've got, right? I love those kind of tips. So I'm just gonna take this serrated rib and as I'm spinning, I mean, you don't have to spin it. If you don't have a banding wheel, you can just turn it, but look how fast this is. So we slipped and scored that outside exactly like we slipped and scored the bottom. And I didn't round this out. I've left this alone because this is a perfect circle. We made it with a cookie cutter, right? We made it with a four inch cookie cutter. So I know my circle's perfect. If you um, get really flimsy cutters though, they will warp and your circle might not be perfect. So make sure if you're gonna buy a set of cutters, you get a set that's pretty good. This was an Attico set, I think it's Attico. And there was like five different cutters, one side's ruffled, one side's not. So I can use it for lots of different things. All right, let's put our mug on. So Diamond Core Tools has a wonderful handheld handle extruders, yes. And we've done a couple tutorials using those and they are marvelous. In fact, um, any of these here done with the Diamond Core? Mm, 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 mm. I don't think any of these are. I'm gonna look around the studio and see if I can find one done. Kev, if you see one done with the Diamond Core Tools handheld extruder, let me know. But you all can go back and search for that and you can watch that tutorial too where we pull the handheld extruders and you know that's the thing. Whatever helps you make pots is an amazing thing. Don't let the fact that you're intimidated by pulling handles or you feel like your pulled handles are not any good prevent you from making a mug. If you're really struggling with pulling handles, get yourself a handheld extruder. They work fabulously. I have a whole bunch of them somewhere. Oh yeah, there they all are. Here, I'll show you. Oh, and I got a mug with one on it. Brilliant. So I've got a few. <laughs> Don't judge me. Okay, to be fair, Diamond Core Tools send me these. So uh, I can spend my money on clay instead of these. So I can make pots for you all to learn how to make pots. But isn't that a nice bouquet? 
Uh, I've got, I think, one of every one they make. I think. I don't know. But this handle that's on this cute little mug that's covered in clay is one of the Diamond Core Tools handheld extruders. So if you struggle, look how nice that is. That's a nice handle. Nice profile. It has a nice little groove in it. Yeah. Uh, which one is it? Let's see. I believe... Which one did I use? I believe I used this one. That's the R4. No, it couldn't have been that one. It has more of a groove. Is it that one? See? Uh, you have to go back and watch the video. I'm sorry. I can't remember everything. I need someone to remember stuff for me now. <laughs> Anyhow, yes, don't hold back. Make your handles. My favorite one, though, right now is the R8. It's this one. I love this profile. And the R12, which... Oh, the R10 is not bad. Okay, let's get off that because... Uh, we'll be here all night. Let's go back to our mug. Alright, so I set the cylinder on top of the circle and now from the inside I'm just going to press out gently and using my finger on the outside, working together with my hand on the inside, we are making sure we're aligning the bottom so that we have a perfect circle bottom. Now you can also gently grab the clay inside and just seat it just a little bit on that little clay disc. as we spin it around, right? So there's the outside, but we're not done. I like to take, now so early videos, if you watch, you're gonna see me use my finger to smooth the outside and you can totally do it that way, but I use this now. I just use my yellow rib and let that ride along. When too much clay builds up on the end, I wipe it clean and I do it again. <laughs> calculating how much the inside of that mug cost with all those diamond core tools. Uh, yeah, don't do that. Don't, you don't want to know. I spend a lot of money on clay stuff because this is what I do. This is my life. This is my job. So um, someone was talking about extruders, and I have five extruders. Uh, three big wall-mounted ones. I have a new Matic one um, and a tabletop like mounting one, and then my little Shimpo one. And that's a lot if someone was just doing this as a hobby, but I'm a, a potter. I mean, this is my life, so it's different. All right, see how we have this really lovely, smooth bottom where it's sealed on the outside? We're going to take the raw knife, and we're going to do an undercut. I'm just going to... No, no, you stay. There we go. I have some little no-slip grip pads that I forgot to grab. Put that over there. And so this creates a nice little bevel um, undercut because that gives it a little lift. You know, if you don't do that, it sits sort of heavy on whatever surface it's on and it looks clunky. Outside, done. Now, what do we do about the inside? We want to seal up the inside, right? And, and we'll get to the rim. Don't worry. I have got that slip and I've got just a one quarter inch synthetic bristle brush flat brush just from the craft store nothing fancy don't use fancy ones and I'm just going to dip it in the magic water until it's soft enough that the bristles loosen up dab it off because I don't really want it soaking wet and then if you look down in when you attach it you'll see a little tiny bit of slip in there we're going to take the the little brush and we're just going to swirl it around on the bottom we're not pressing out though do not press outward with this all we're doing is sealing up that inside seam. That's it. And you do not have to put a coil in here. Not at all. The slip that's already there and smoothing it out is basically making kind of like a mini coil. All right, so that's done. That's the bottom done. So we have the top. And, you know, you can just straighten it out by eye. And you can get a really nice looking mug doing it that way. But I discovered a few years ago how amazing commercially made terracotta pots are as a rounder. Now, I do have a tutorial on making a clay rounder, and you can make your own from a cone if you want to. But you get some of these, and please clean them off after you use them because now I have to clean it off and wait for it to dry or it's going to stick.
Oh, someone asking about what was the carpal tunnel? You need carpal tunnel surgery. You know that I had it done. Any tips or suggestions? Surely I lived for 10 years with uh, needing carpal tunnel surgery and it got to the point where I couldn't hold stuff. Like I was dropping things. It was bad. It was very bad. Um, don't wait. Please go as soon as possible. I couldn't use my hands. I didn't get good use back for six months. I had it on both wrists. But um, you can't really even see the scars. And it's, I'm pain free now. It's amazing. So I do highly suggest you get the carpal tunnel surgery if you need, the, if you need it. Okay. Um, also, I will like to add for that surgery, mine was totally different. Most people have just a tiny incision and they can do it easier. Mine had to be cut wide open and completely opened. Um, by the surgeon, it was a, it was very invasive because I actually had, um, I had some extra nerves in here. And if he hadn't done that, he would have cut that and I would have lost feeling. So there, there was some extenuating circumstances in my case, but I did go to the best hand surgeon, this side of the Mississippi. So I'm really happy at Dartmouth. He did an amazing job. Dr. Pellegrino. Thank you. Okay. That's my shout out. All right. I'm putting my terracotta pot in and I'm just gently pressing up against the terracotta pot. And I'm checking every once in a while to make sure it's not sticking, mostly because I had to wipe it clean, right? See the difference in the color? If it's really, if it's wet when you stick it in, guess what? It's gonna stay. It's gonna be stuck in there and you're gonna fight it to get it out and you're gonna actually tear some of the clay off. You don't wanna do that. So I just put it in the terracotta pot and I'm just, do you see I'm rolling against it? You notice how there's a lot of rolling motion? There's none of the smearing back and forth. It's rolling, whether it's rolling up or rolling around, but there's no smearing. So you press it up against the side and you take it off and you have a perfect circle. And you can just leave it like that and look at the mug you have. That's a great mug, right? If you want the diner style, the traditional like cabin mug, that's what you do. Now if you want to put some texture in there, then I suggest that you want to put some volume in there. You do it now. So we rounded the top. That's great. But I want a little tummy on here. You don't have to have a little tummy if you don't want one. It's up to you. So when we think about making mugs, let's think about the shape for a minute. So when we have a mug like this, this is a great mug. And our hands can curl around this mug. They can. But look at your hand. Look at the shape of your hand. Your hand makes a little cup on its own. You see that little cupping that we've got going on? So why not make a mug that fits the cup of your hand? So why not make a mug that fits, right? So to get this shape, what do you do? Well, you've got a mold. Everybody, you've got a mold built in. It's your hand. You put your hand up against the outside. And then you're going to use your rib on the inside. And if you don't have a rib, you can use the back of that wooden clay, that wooden knife, except you'll pull upwards. With the rib, we're going to pull sideways. OK? So going in, and we're just going to do this. We're going to hold the rib, and we're going to sweep. Now, this is a little one. I usually use a bigger one. But my air and my spare have run away. So I'm using my mini rib. And I just press this in. And I'm just lifting my hand and placing it up against the side, smooth. Lift, place, smooth. Lift, place, smooth. Lift, place, smooth. Now all that happens without me saying those words, right? And we just repeat it over and over. And you do this gently. And I'm not actually coming up inside the mug. I'm staying in the same place as it rotates. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I get a really nice curve. And it's my hand. So when you buy a mug from a potter that's done this, you're actually buying a mug in the shape of their hand. So when you buy my hand-built mugs, this curve is the inside of my hand. Use that information however you want. <laughs> All right. So I just keep going around until I have a nice, full, round tummy, just like baby kittens and puppies. Full round tummies. That's what we want here, folks. Right? And the other reason I keep my hand up against it is so that I don't get too aggressive and pop my bottom seam. Now I'm going to come up just a bit, because this is kind of low. I want it to come up. So I'm just going to raise my hand up 
just about a half an inch. And I'm just going to repeat that exact same process a half inch up from the bottom. And if you wanted to keep the volume going, well, after you've turned it a few times, come up a little higher and do it again, right? And so you just keep going up the mug and adding volume. This is why the clay slab, people will say, oh, your slab's too thick, you know? Well, it's not too thick. We're stretching that out. We are adding so much volume to that, we need this thickness. It won't work if it's too thin. I haven't touched the top at all. Do you notice that? It's just staying as is. And so I'm looking at that shape, turning it and looking at it. I'm happy with that. That looks good. Now here's a little secret trick. I often, I used to just grab the top and fold the top out. But if you put your terracotta pot back in, and I believe this is a four inch, could be a six. I'm telling you, just get, they're like a dollar. Go buy, buy all the sizes. I have a whole, look, I have many. Just get, get one of every size, six inch down, just get them all. You'll make bigger pots. So now I put this in and the terracotta pot tapers, right? So there's about this much space here between the edge, between the edge of my mug. So I can do this. Again, we're rolling, we're rolling. We're not smearing, I'm just rolling down and pressing it in to that terracotta pot. I can feel it, I can feel it up against my clay. And so now, by creating a little bit of an inward curve, it accentuates the outward curve. Now we can go ahead and I just gently curl out, just very gently, I don't know if I can show you, thumbs and my two fingers right here. Just gently curl this out, just a tiny bit. All the way around, take it slow. Slow and steady, wins the race here. Do I have a storefront? Um, so currently I'm only selling my pottery during Open Studio Weekend here in Vermont in person. That'll be Memorial Day. Once the, because I am building a new studio. And once the new studio is built and I have all that organized, I will uh, get back to selling online again, like I used to. All right, so we're gonna do my favorite, my favorite food is a taco, but we're gonna make a taco out of a sponge. Tacos are not my favorite food. Sorry, I do love a taco, but no. Um, not trying to knock a taco, but we wrap it around and we just spin and it's rounding over. You could also just do this, see this right here? Right here, this, this little thing, it's like making a shadow duck. Can you, can you do shadow animals? You do that and you pinch the top just gently and spin it and that compresses it and thins it just a bit, right? Because you don't want it so thick that you're drinking out of a sink basin, as someone once said when they were commenting on one of my photos of my mugs on social media. <laughs> They're like, that's drinking out of a sink basin. I was like, okay, not really, but you, whatever. I sometimes wonder what people are thinking when they type comments in that are just not so nice. All right, there we go. So right here is our seam, right there. It's a little thicker because we overlap the clay. So you got a couple options. You can just keep thinning it down. If you happen to have a bump that sticks up too much and it's making you very unhappy, you can take your knife and just gently skim it away and that'll thin it down for you. And then you just smooth it back out. So we've got a mug. It's a pretty nice looking mug. It's got a nice shape to it. What do you think? And it's got cute birds on it. Look at the burbs. I love them. So now we're gonna put a handle on it. Oh uh, no, Bettina, someone, so the air and the spare. Years ago, one of my members sent me two red ribs, like four years ago. And one says an air and a spare, and the other one says and a spare. So I've got two, but it's not the size, it's the next one up, and I've managed to lose both of them. Uh, yeah, go figure. Let's make our handle now. <laughs> uh, 
You had both of your hands done with carpal tunnel at the same time. Yeah, I did one on uh, March 1st and one on April 1st, April Fools, in 2021. Yeah, 2021. I did one and then a month later I did the other. And it was a life changer and I put it off for years. But it got so bad I couldn't hold things. All right, so I just cut this off a little bit. I had a lot of extra, a, a lot of extra clay, which we can add to this, wedge it back up, goes back in the bucket, becomes another mug. Actually, it's almost enough for a handle right there. And then I like to make these decorative little dog paw handles. See the bottom of that right there? I can't see if I can get the top. You can kind of see, there it is, in there. So I use a cookie cutter to get that. And it's just this one and a half, one and three quarter inch flower. I've got them in all different sizes. And Debbie Delacruz from De La Design Gifts.com has made, based on my love of the metal one, a great plastic cutter that's already two sizes. So you can get one from her, they're great. All right, so after I do that, I'm just gonna tamp down the edge smooth it out a little bit, shape it. it. So it's either a dog paw or it's something from Dr. Seuss. Go figure. That Lorax is gonna show up and want it. Could happen. All right, now I'm gonna press it up against the board just to flatten the outside and also so I can smooth out and round over the backside. All right, so now we have something pretty nice happening there. The excess handles is where gnomes come from. Yes, this is a future gnome right here. Or a couple clay houses, little mini thumb houses, thumb, little thimble houses. All right, we can move this board out of the way. Let's get our length. So each handle is custom made for each mug. It's all custom. It's bespoke. And so this is going to attach up here. But that's, that's a big handle. But, you know, here's the thing. If you get into making pottery to sell, you want to make all different sized handles because you have people with different sized hands. I have small hands, but I still want to put three, three fingers in my handle. This is how I hold a mug. So this is going to be longer than I need. We're going to go ahead and cut off a couple in, bah, what, bah, inch, inchish, inchish. That's good. So let's go ahead and Thin this out, I'm gonna stretch it a little bit. Give it a little flare, just a tiny bit of flare. Back to our amazing cookie cutter. Cut that there. Thin it out. Again, we can put it, I just put it on a board so that I can work on it a little bit. Looks good. Now, slip and score. Slip and score. This would be a great handle for a cabinet, I think. And then this is gonna go here. We're not attaching it quite yet. We're just lining it up. Take a look at it. Decide if that's where you want your handle. That looks nice. Make sure it's aligned top to bottom. It needs to come this way a hair. And then when you pull this away, some of that slip is left behind. So I have a little visual cue that I can go by. So we slip and score and slip and score. And then now we're gonna attach the top. I could have let my mug sit up a tiny bit before attaching the handle. I probably could have given it about 10 minutes, but we don't have 10 minutes to wait. So I'm just holding the handle and gently, see if I turn it that way. Gently pressing the outside in and using my finger on the inside to resist. And then we'll come down here. Make sure when you do this, it's not like that. Make sure it's not like that, right? You want to make sure they're lined up top to bottom. So I'm sorry, I got to turn it. Oh, we're going to see me fix a rim because I just bumped it. We're going to see me turn it so that I can see it. And then I'll show you how to fix a rim when you smack it because that happens. And then again, just rolling. Everything is still very flexible and that's good. That means we're not gonna have too many warping issues or cracking issues with our handle. So there's our handle shape. Another tip, that terracotta pot can come back in. You can, at an angle, put it up against the side and use that 
to resist as you roll your handle on. You can only do that on the top one. You can't do it on the bottom. All right, so I did smack it there. See that? Terrible me. It happens more often than not. You would never know, though. Okay. Taking the red rib, we're just going to smooth it out. Just going to pinch it gently. If you gouge it so bad you take out material, you could add a little bit back in. But often, just taking a rib and smoothing it down Do the sponge taco. Bend my fingers. And then we're going to put this back in because, poor thing, this is what I was talking about. If it's wet, it's going to stick. See, it's stuck. The clay is wet. But I got it away. Whew. All right. So if you put your handle on, a little too soon like I did, what happens is sometimes the weight of the handle can pull on your mug and it can pull it out of the round. So you won't have a perfect circle, you have more like a teardrop shape going on. To counteract that, you can put your mug as it's drying up against something. So I can have my mug here and another mug, right? And we just kind of put it, I don't know if you can see that. I'll turn it this way. So you just set your mug so it's not pulling on the side wall. And you put something else up against it. It could be a bottle, it can be another mug. You can make a crazy sculptural thing out of this extra clay we have here. Right? They look kind of funny, I know. But look what I have. I have a support now. So it'll hold my mug handle so it doesn't pull out. But if you wait to the proper dryness of your mug, you're not going to have that problem. The mini projects from Scraps of Clay are such a delight. Aren't they fun? Yeah, so like this right here, we've used it a bit. It's drying out. So what we need to do is have a bucket of water off to the side. We just dunk it in the water, the whole thing, right? Now it's very wet. That's all right. We're just going to sit it on a board right here, like that. I'm just going to let it sit here for about 10, 15 minutes, then I'll roll it back out into a coil. And now I can make a whole bunch of things with it. So I can make a mini house. I can make a mushroom. You know, our mushroom tutorial, we've got the thumb houses. We've got the little pumpkins that we did. We've got gnomes. You can make some bisque stamps out of it. Roll it up into a ball and make a textured ball stamp. Lots and lots of options. So there you got it. Jesse had caffeine today. <laughs> oh, you guys, shh, don't tell. I did, I had, ca I did, I did have caffeine. I had caffeine right before the, like, the hour leading up to the broadcast. I don't normally have caffeine, but when I do, I am sassier. I can't help it. I'm pretty sassy to begin with. Put a little caffeine in me and watch out. Right? Oh, it's, this is the best mug I've ever made. I think that every time I make a mug nowadays, like as just, just because it is, it's the best one because it's the most recent one I made and every one I make gets better and better. And in 10 more years, they're going to be better. In 20 years, they'll be even better than that. Unless I just decide to, well, who knows what I'll be doing for mugs. I might just be doing some crazy stuff. I could be like, here's your mug. Enjoy. No, I won't do that. <laughs> it's bespoke. <laughs> oh, well, we have fun, don't we? Okay, so we made a mug. Um, I have a bunch of mug tutorials on Clayshare, and I have, I have some free ones, making a, a mug with volume, a big mug with volumes, a free tutorial. Anybody can watch it. There's a lot of premium classes just for our premium members. If you're not a member, you can sign up for our seven-day free trial and try it all out and check out the mugs and the hundreds of other classes and see if you like it. If you like it, oh my gosh, it's like going to, it's, it's less to join Clayshare for a month than going to Starbucks twice. So, Maybe you just two days a month, you give up your coffee 
and you use that money to join Clayshare. And then you get access to hundreds of classes, our private broadcasts, special deals, offers, promos, fun, good things. Uh, next in our private broadcast, which is only for premium members, we have got something so fun. Oh my gosh, little B plates. So this guy right here, we're gonna be making a couple more just like it. These are my new Celadons. This is the Briar Rose. This is Lily of the Valley, and this one is Buttercup, named after my now past chicken Buttercup, but you know, Buttercup was my beautiful buff Orpington. Yeah, anyhow, the artwork, premium members, guess what? You guys can go and get this. I made this for you. I hand drew this artwork, so it's mine, and you guys can download this and print it out with your laser printer on decal paper, and then you put it on your plate and we're gonna fire this. Now it looks black right now, but it will be sepia tone, it'll be brown. It'll be like this. It'll be the color like the decals on this. So you can make your own decals, but for this, you can just print out this, right? And we'll talk about that in the next class. So that's what we're doing at 6.15. So everybody else, thank you for hanging out here with me. Again, go download Clayshare and come make pots with me. You'll have fun and you won't ever regret it, I promise you. Um, my premium members, darlings, I will see you in a few minutes. I gotta clean up all this clay and get my decal stuff out, but 